this video is just going to be like some general advice for A level and GCSE drama. Mine was a Dexcel, um, so it might be different kind of content. But there's always these three main components in pretty much every drama course, um, GCSE or A level or Dexcel, AQA, all the other ones. So there's the live performance where you have to watch a performance and kind of review it or something along those lines. Then you get a drama text, you get a play and you have to kind of write about it, maybe how you would direct it, maybe how you would um, be the lighting designer. And then there's the performance course um, and I will give a couple of tips on that. So for the live theatre evaluation, we did see A Tale of Two Cities. Um, and I knew nothing about it um, and I probably, I still don't, um, so I would suggest before you see the play, you go and see it with your classmates and you have a good time, I'd go and research it just a little bit, just even like a little quick google search, even on the trip there, something as simple as that can really help you remember and understand the whole plot because ours was so booming difficult. I did not understand any of it. Um, and we weren't even told, we weren't even told that we were going to be doing our actual, you know, A-level exam on it. We were just like, here's a play, go and watch it. Okay, by the way, a lot of our grades can be resting on what you remembered. What? Um, so definitely make some notes um, because we didn't remember anything, we had to make most of it up. This uh, part of the exam is the opportunity that you have to kind of know all the stuff already and just blurt it out in the exam according to the question. Um, so if you want to be able to do that, know, know the play really, really well. That is going to help you so much. Explain everything in minute detail. So remember, like as a little to-do list, or I'll put it here. Um, so themes, you want to talk about themes of the play and how they were, <coughs> how the director maybe um, showed them. Um, and then you want to talk about it. <laughs> then you want to talk. <laughs> I hate myself. Then you want to talk about the impact on the audience. That's one of the main, really important things that I always used to forget. Um, but that's literally what your essay is on. Um, that's what my essay was, and yours might be a little bit different. But please always talk about the impact on the audience because if you think about it, theatre is not for laughs. <laughs> Maybe it is, but if it's for laughs, then it's about, it's for the audience, <laughs> it's for the audience, um, whether we like it or not, um, whether we mention it or not, and we should mention it because, look at all the dust particles around there, um, we should mention it because we need to know, we need to show the examiner that um, we know, we know that, and if we're ever a director, we grow up, and be a director or an actor, we need to know that it's for the audience and um, we need to note that their reactions and stuff um, it's gonna give you that extra mark and awareness uh, you also want to talk about context um, as well uh, that's gonna get you that context mark so you want to talk about um, <clears throat> the historical context um, as well as the social context and something else uh, mm, I think it's the as well so oh that's it mm. Um, it is the context around the modern audience. So, does the modern does the modern audience um, like the why are that dust particles? Why is my attention span so small? <laughs> really, I really am trying. I filmed this video twice. I'm sorry. <laughs> About evaluate it as well because you've got to evaluate. That's the next thing. So, say um, they they did this quite well for a modern audience. They adapted this part to make it very modern and interesting. But this part, like the script of it, maybe was still really difficult to understand. Um, so the plot was a bit blurry at times. Yeah. Um, so do something like that. evaluate. So say this was good, this was bad. <clears throat> and obviously say why. Costume styles as well. You can just pop those kind of keywords in. Um, but for our exam, we got a um, we got two pages of notes. Just fill fill them up. Fill those pages of notes up. So there's this cool thing that you can do on my laptop, and you can do on any laptop really if you just put it in the thesaurus. But with mine, you can like click on it weirdly, um, and like it comes up as like all the other words that you can use. So you can change up 
like your vocab sound really clever when you're doing your practice essays um please do that and then you can find new words <clears throat> put them in quizlet have a little word party so practice essays do lots of them <laughs> for the oh i just realized my bagel my bagel Sarah toaster damn it Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, right, the video. <laughs> I have no idea what I was saying. Two tips um, for every essay. Number one, practice essays. Practice essays are the only way you're gonna grow as an essay writer. Um, so do them. I'd say like do once a week, uh, especially when it comes up to yeah, closer to the exams. Obviously make sure that um, your teacher, you know, states what's good and what's bad so that you can improve. But yeah, just the act of writing them can really, really, really help. Second tip, give as much specific examples as you possibly can. Um, my voice went really weird then. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> I'll tell you how like, I'll explain it. This is a sentence. Um, this is another sentence. Which one is better? You got uh, 30 seconds. Okay, this one is better. Um, yeah, <laughs> basically. So another overall essay writing tip. For those A stars, because I, I did get one once, <laughs> ever again, but I, I got it once, so <laughs> I'm basically an expert. Um, <coughs> um, <laughs> what was I going to say? <laughs> oh, patterns. Patterns are very important for any essay ever. If you're going to talk about something, you want it to be a main part of the play. You don't want it to be like, this probably means this. If there's no other evidence like around the, the other parts of the play, then there's no point to it. There's no point writing about it. And it doesn't really mean anything in terms of the rest of the play. And ultimately, that's what the context is, is the rest of the play. Do you know what I mean? I might not be making any sense. But anyway, what you want to talk about is patterns. Um, so if there's like a motif that this actor does for his character, say, he did this over here, and he also did this over here, um, and he did this at this point in the play as well and all those together really made like his actor's journey and really made us connect with him so talk about patterns in that way for the live theatre um yeah the next part of the curriculum is um what's it about i've forgotten <laughs> you get a play and um and you talk about how you would either direct or act in that play. I really enjoyed this one. There was Machino and Boychek we did. Practice essays, but not this time not you doing them. Um, you read other people's essays as well. These, they, this was like invaluable. Uh, I think I said this for my English video as well, but it's so important. It helped me so much. Yeah, stealing off other people, basically. <laughs> Um, not really, but <clears throat> I will leave some of my practice essays down below so that you can read them. I'm not saying they're perfect or good by any means, but you can um, <clears throat> certainly steal a few things from them. Um, obviously, don't plagiarise, um, but if you use like research a word that I use or something like that. So then in the video, I talk about um, being specific and purposeful, so I'm going to talk about that here. Because I think it is very, very important. I'm doing film at the moment. The One of the main things that I've learned and probably will ever learn is everything in film should be there for a purpose or a reason. Even if that reason the audience will never know, you have to know. It's kind of like uh, Chekhov's gun. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's about kind of if a gun is shown on screen, then you have to kind of use it. Um, and I see essays as that. So if you're gonna write and take time on this whole paragraph that has a point, that point has to be relevant. It has to mean something to do with the play, 
but also the context outside of the play. Like we often forget it's not just a little play, you know, a little exam and that's what's happening. Um, it's a play that's gonna be shown to this audience, um, maybe even an audience that was in like the 17th century. How would they have reacted to that? And what did that mean? What was the writer trying to say about that society or about the kind of the themes around that? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I hope you get know what I mean. Um, specific and purposeful. Just remember those keywords <laughs> for any essay, really, for A level. Because we always think that it, oh, it's just an essay, but if you end up, you know, actually directing and stuff like that, then you want to be for a reason, yeah? You want to say something to society. Oh yeah, and talk about how that would affect the audience as well, of the the audience of the contemporary society or the 1920s society. Yeah, 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 you got it. So say you're a director of this play, and you want cool blue and red lights. Why? You want to be, you want to be, say like a reason for each thing, and you want it to like, like this is A-level drama or GCC drama, you want it to me, you want to just be like, talk about it for ages. So you want to be like, you know, I would use red and blue lights to show the opposites of society and how the two classes opposed each other. Also, how the the audience would react to this. Also, it would mean this. You know, be super pretentious about it um, because that's the only way you're gonna get the marks. <laughs> so for my exam, basically. <clears throat> you directed the play um, and you talk about and you get like a theme or a, a theatre element in the exam and you have to write about that in terms of how you would direct it. So everyone has their own concept, everyone was developing their own concept. We kind of supposed to have one like as a, we had one as a, uh, as a class, but I ended up diverting a little bit. So I was kind of reworking it, reading it um, in my own time and kind of thinking, oh this would really work. like if the whole thing was just screens and everyone was kind of on their phones. So that's, you know, speaking to contemporary society. But I developed my idea so much and I really enjoyed it. And I think that was, that was, hello? That really helped in my favor because um, I thought about it quite a lot um, and it was very original and I had loads to talk about. If you, for your directorial concept, it's best to just be as imaginative as possible. You don't have a budget so go all out like just just think of the craziest things possible obviously within like the themes and stuff um but if you want the you know blooming void check flying then you have void check flying if it shows something about society you know what i mean um so yeah um be as imaginative as, and have fun with it like why not <laughs> i know it's not fun writing the essays but if you have fun write like developing the concept with your friends and stuff. Um, that'd be <laughs> so to finish off the kind of the essay part of this video, I would say point evidence explain, obviously. I will I will have a little list, like a little to-do list, checklist kind of thing um, in the description so that maybe you could like print it out and do a little tick, tick checklist um, for each essay. <clears throat> maybe that'll help. Um, uh, so now it's the fun part. Um, sorry, the performance, <laughs> of course. Um, why else would we have chosen GCSE or A level drama if we didn't love the performance? Oh, I attach it to my hair and not <laughs> chain. If you don't like the performance, this is for the very few that don't like it. Here are some tips for you. Like maybe you're scared um, or whatever. So. You Hello. Your audience is full of your friends, um, and that's terrifying, right? Especially if you're in GTSE, like, it's kind of scary. Um, so I would say for that, have you ever been to, like, a workshop and, um, like an acting workshop or something, or even just in class, and we go around in a circle, say their names or whatever, or, you know, performing some improvisation, right? And then there's just going around, everyone's a bit boring, everyone's a couple of people like, oh, this is embarrassing. And kind of walking out and laughing to their friends about it. But there's this guy called John. John could be anyone. But there's this guy called John, or girl called John, because it's equality. And he is very, very good. And, um, 
kind of people are like, oh, it's pretty good at improvisation. Um, and people, and then he kind of goes back, steps back into his little spot in his circle, and he becomes himself again. Um, <laughs> John is not really gonna get teased, um, because he was really good. Um, or he put him his whole self into it, even if he wasn't really good. Like he put his whole self into it. Um, and at the end of the day, your friends can't really be like, ah, ha, 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 when you're like amazing. Um, and I'm not saying you need to be amazing for your friends not to, you know, tease you or whatever, or for you to feel confident. Um, but if you put your whole self into it and um, you really try and you, you know. You're not half fasting it, it's fine. Just put yourself into it and own it, really. Own that character, own that moment, because people are looking at you like that's the truth. And people don't really care if you go wrong at all. That's something I learned and that's really helped. Like no one, literally no one cares. If you go wrong or if you stumble or if you, I don't know, something embarrassing happens, you trip over, I don't know. <clears throat> You make it part of the thing, um, but like no one cares. Like, <laughs> like I know that sounds kind of bad, but no one, no one cares. Like people, and if they do, people, something must be really boring in that class. Um. Anyway, that was for the people who, like me, are very embarrassed to do that sort of thing. Drama really, 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 really helped with my confidence. Like, that's this is why I love it because it's really helped me. Um, and if you're shy at the moment, if you practice, it'll be fine. Okay, for four months exam, let's talk about the actual exam. Ah, um, so it is terrifying. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna say a few things first, like they're really obvious. So you wanna breathe before you start. So you say you're on stage and you're like, you're really, really scared. You wanna not have your breath, like your lungs full of like, <laughs> you don't wanna, you don't wanna have that. Cause when you see your line, <laughs> you like kind of run out of breath, breathe. And that's a stupid thing, I can't believe I'm saying. Breathe, you want to be completely calm, take a breath, um, really feel that breath. Uh, another obvious thing, know your lines, like, I had to practice lines a lot, like, I know I'm awful at remembering lines, I know I, I was, but that's good because if I didn't know that, I would have been in the exam and been like, oh. Uh oh. Every day I, ha I um, had like voice memo recorded, other people's lines recorded. But no, I would listen to it all the time. I even had Quizlet flashcards for the lines I really like could completely forgot. So I'd have like the prompt line and then on the other side I'd have like my line. It was intense line learning. So this is a strange uh, tip I got like once on someone from YouTube. If you learn your lines in a neutral way, then you can respond when you are actually, you know, rehearsing, like doing a proper rehearsal, you can respond kind of naturally um, in terms of how they say it. Because you, you don't know how they're going to say that line. It could be completely different. So you don't want to practice, like, this kind of intonation and it just not quite work, not quite mould together. So you want to wait until you you literally hear that line, your, your character hears that line. Then you can be like, you can react in the way that your character would. Um, yeah. So make sure you record yourself. I know, I know. Um, but it's best recording yourself before your teachers make you make you do it. Um, record yourself at home definitely, um, and watch yourself back. It's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> it's awful. It's so important um, because you see your flaws. You see how you really look from the audience. This is perspective. God, I didn't realize I was that pretentious and awful. Um, but it's very important because you, you know, it's better that you know that before the exam. Um, I, I hope this helped you even a little bit. This was just kind of a brief video, but if you want an in-depth video, let me know. Um, I can do more on one specific essay because I only did this video because it was requested, and that's the good thing about su supporting small creators because they have no one else to respond to. <laughs> I will leave uh, resources down below to help you. Um, I really hope 
you do well in your exam and you have fun in drama because ultimately it's just about having fun um yeah it sucks that it has turned into very less creative stuff um but you still have opportunity to be creative so take every little opportunity that you have um yeah okay we do bye bye Okay. Um, um, my double chin is looking great in this angle. I wasn't gonna say anything, so I don't even know why I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, my avocado. Um, um, specific examples are really important. Um. Oh, she said basically. God, didn't you listen? <laughs> it's like a play. Yeah, they're called plays. Well done, Toby. <laughs> You can't really. Whoa! It happened to my voice again. This happened in the first video. <coughs> the end of it is so. Oh my god, stop hiccuping!